Compared with the vast realms of time and space, a century on Earth can seem irrelevant. But in just over 100 years, pioneers have established the field of organ transplantation as a centerpiece of the medical universe. The determination of our pioneers was absolute. They collaborated and continued to drive innovation, eventually leading to new discoveries and world-first operations, providing hope for formerly untreatable conditions. In uh, 1952, for unclear reasons, uh, a young guy named Marius Bernard fell from a roof and he was uh, transported to Necker Hospital and he was given the kidney of uh, his mother, which at that time was really uh, something uh, extraordinary. I became known a long time ago for, um, uh, for uh, producing the first real series of kidney transplants, successful kidney transplants. We had to sit during the night and work uh, through the night and allocate organs from one centre to other centres. My mentor and boss was Roy Kahn, who of course was one of the pioneers of transplantation. Uh, looking back on it, um, he, he taught me a, not, a lot, not just about how to do it, because I think you can learn that from lots of people, but how to approach the whole issue of trying to do something which has not been done before. Transplant programs, transplant organizations and transplant centers were founded, enabling knowledge distribution and widespread application of transplantation, saving many thousands of lives. I worked with Peter Morris, who of course is a, another really big name in transplantation uh, and he taught me other things um, uh, about how to uh, manage, how to develop a scientific uh, area, how to manage a transplant program uh, and again uh, he quietly um, taught me a great deal. It was a, it's a, a wonderful relationship and one which continues to this day. And was absolutely indispensable because we we began cyclosporin there and uh, uh, did 12 liver transplants out there, 11 of whom survived for a year, 10 of whom are still alive. In my earlier um, period, when I was doing my higher degree in research, I was very much involved in looking at the way monoclonal antibodies might be useful in transplantation, particularly. Uh, the antibody then known as Kempath, now known as Alamtuzumab, where I did quite a lot of work. ESOT has uh, become a, a very important global player in, in organ transplantation. It, it is now um, a major um, forum um, for exchange of clinical experience, best practice, um, scientific innovation and also education and training. Most importantly, I have witnessed 
and followed the development of ESOT from a small gathering of a few transplant uh, enthusiasts to an important scientific international society uh, that really today is one of the leading societies, uh, societies in this field in the world. Dr. Belzer was a very exciting individual, originally a Dutchman who then went to San Francisco and finally ended up in Wisconsin. And he was one of the pioneers in, in organ transplantation, especially in preservation. And I was there and had this great opportunity to work with him on the UW solution, which then became one of the standard preservation solutions in the world. It has become more and more common to know someone who has received a transplant. Patients use new channels to share their stories with the public and with those on waiting lists, helping them to gain insight into their journeys. I entered a surgical residency on the basis of the fact that I was so interested in the field of transplantation, as well as I thought surgery would be an exciting career. And she suggested to me, why can't you do a uterus transplantation? My mother could be the donor. Uh, this was a new, totally new concept to me and I've never heard about it. I thought she was a little crazy, but I went back and thought about it and said, well, this may be something in this. I will start a research project to see if this is feasible or not. Transplant for me completely changed my life. I remember my husband coming downstairs and finding me in tears. Um, I was just all the emotions you can think of. I was happy, scared, you know, couldn't believe it. Just we'd waited so long for the call to come that it had actually come and we just we couldn't believe it. That moment when you turn right to theatre and your family turns left and you just don't know if you're going to see them again is, is just something that is very difficult to, to describe. I thought, you know, damn, I'm having a heart transplant. My life was over and then Nick and the team, they told me that life could go on and I could get on with things. We know, of course, that we still have a persistent shortage of organ donors. Uh, there's many more patients waiting than we probably will ever have donors and the number and the quality of the organ donors is, is changing. I had been advised that my transplant had come from an altruistic donor um, which I didn't really understand at the time which I now know to mean somebody that doesn't have another person to donate to so somebody that has come forward and wants to donate to a stranger which is something I don't think I'll ever quite get my head around. If you or somebody else is thinking about becoming a living kidney donor, I would say it's the most amazing experience ever. I feel honoured and blessed to have been part of it. Organisations like ESOT provide forums to share and discuss cutting edge discoveries and shape the future with displays of groundbreaking techniques and technologies.
there are many of us who are in the trenches taking care of patients all the time, every day, day in, day out, and coming up with new research questions that could be directly impactful on patient care. There's a lot we don't know. Um, in fact, what we know is far less than what we don't know. We also have devices which we can, like machines, where we can perfuse organs once they are retrieved outside the body, either cold or warm, which allows us then to assess the quality, but we can also try and start to repair. In this respect, of course, some very interesting movements are there that we can now also perfuse organs warm. Uh, so it's much more physiological than in the past when it was cold. Uh, and when there's a normal temperature, you can also try to kind of um, repair and regenerate. Transplantation in the space of 50 years has come a tremendous way, but it has always depended on donor organs. The idea is to look at implanting stem cells to help in the reconditioning or repair and regeneration of the injured tissue. 3D bioprinting is really a form of additive manufacturing. At the moment, there's always a balance between the hazards of long-term immunosuppression, particularly uh, as well, of course, as the risks of surgery against the long-term risks of whatever the disease is. In Asia, due to the donor shortage of brain-dead donor, we are mainly dependent on living donor liver transplant. I think what resonated with me, the kidney, is it is an organ that has such a long waiting list. In the U.S., there's about over 100,000 people waiting and less than 20,000 transplants done. It's fun to be with people, to sit at the table, to try to begin with nothing and create something, which then um, eventually, hopefully, becomes something really robust and sustainable and becomes a success. And I think that's the real fun of, of the work. I think transplantation has been a, a wonderful career and continues to be a wonderful career. It was exciting when I started. It's probably even more exciting now. I think it's a great opportunity for young scientists and young doctors to go into. I would recommend it strongly. I think the challenges are every bit as exciting as they were. This is the age of good quality evidence. So. There's a lot to be done, it's an exciting field and it'll continue to be an exciting field. I think that the future of, of, of transplantation is really exciting for not just the, the, the doctors and the surgeons and the nurses but also the patients. We have come a long way since the Big Bang. In 2015, 126,670 patients received a life-changing transplant but that met less than 10% of the global need. With many challenges ahead, what will the next 100 years look like? It's up to us. Let's start shaping the future, here and now.